Today I thought we'd have a look at something that I've thought about doing for some time, a little analysis of Sega's launch lineups. We'll be looking at all of Sega's main consoles and their respective launch titles, comparing Japan, Europe and the US. I'll explain with each console which titles were available at launch in each region, and then compare them and decide which had the best selection of games on offer at the console's release. Normally I'm very careful about saying North America rather than merely the US, but in this video I'll be referring to the US launch. No offence meant to anyone in North America outside of the States, it's just that that was the data available. Similarly, I'll sometimes refer to the European launch as a whole, and sometimes just the UK, because again, that was the available data. Also, just a quick disclaimer, there were several different lists online, so I've tried my best to cross-reference and check the dates of the games, but I think I've got them all right. So let's have a look at the launch titles for each of Sega's consoles in each region, and decide which was the best. First we'll look at the Master System, which was released as the Sega Mark III in Japan in October of 1985. This launched with a mere two games, arcade classic Hang On and platforming shooter Teddy Boy Blues. Both were released in the My Card format, which stored the game data on cards much like the PC Engine's Hue cards rather than cartridges. The Master System as we know it came to the US in June 1986, again with two games. Hang On makes another appearance and light gun shooting gallery game Safari Hunt. Safari Hunt never got a dedicated release on Master System, but in the US these two games were available as a double pack. And finally came the UK launch in late 1986. Being the latest of the three, it had by far the best selection of games available at launch. Again Hang On makes an appearance, but there were six other games available too. Vertical Shooter Action Fighter, Kung Fu Em Up Black Belt, which was Hokuto no Ken in Japan, aka Fist of the North Star. Choplifter, which incidentally was never released in Japan. The colourful Cut Em Up Fantasy Zone. Scrolling Shooter Transbot, which was called Astro Flash in Japan. And Formula One Racer World Grand Prix. All these were released on cartridge except for Hang On and Transbot, which were in the Sega card format. Very unusual for a UK launch lineup, three of those seven games were shoot 'em ups perhaps less surprising considering the era. So in summary, all three regions got Hang On, the US and Japan got one extra game each, whereas the UK got six. Unlike some of the later consoles we'll be looking at, there's a clear winner here, the UK lineup is by far the best. You might say that this is predictable considering that the UK Master System release was the latter of the three, but as we'll see later on, that isn't always the case. Next came the Mega Drive, released in Japan in October 1988. As with the Master System at launch in Japan, there were two available games, Space Harrier 2 and Super Thunder Blade. Both great games, but very similar in style. The US release came in 1989, where the console was renamed the Sega Genesis due to copyright reasons with the name Mega Drive. Again, Space Harrier 2 was available, but they also got Altered Beast. Last Battle, which was called Hokuto no Ken in Japan, clearly they love that franchise. Thunder Force 2, the first Mega Drive entry in the excellent series of shooters. Sega's mascot platformer Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle. And Tommy Lasorda Baseball, which was called Super League in Japan and Europe. The European launch was over a year later in November of 1990. As with Japan, Europe got Space Harrier 2 and Super Thunder Blade, as well as Thunder Force 2 and Altered Beast, which were in the US lineup. There were two new additions to this launch lineup though Falling Block Puzzle Game Columns, and Sega's fantasy arcade beat em up, The Mighty Golden Axe. So let's compare the three. All regions got Space Harrier 2. As Japan's two titles were already available at launch in Europe, we can remove it from the running straight away. That leaves the US and Europe. Both regions had Space Harrier 2, Altered Beast, Alex Kidd and Thunder Force 2 available at launch, so removing those four lets us compare the rest. So it's the US with Last Battle and Tommy Lasorda Baseball, versus Europe with Columns and Golden Axe. Again, a pretty resounding win here, 
Europe takes it. October 1990 marked the release of the Game Gear in Japan. Sega's handheld had three games on launch day here. Columns, a port of the arcade game Pengo, which never made it to the US, and Sega's F1 racer Super Monaco GP. Unusually, the European and US launches were simultaneous, occurring on April the 26th, 1991. Both again received Columns and Super Monaco GP as launch titles, as well as both getting Mickey Mouse's platforming adventure, Castle of Illusion. But that was it for the European launch, they only got those three titles. Where Japan and Europe had three games available at launch, the US had double the amount at six, despite being released at the same time in Europe. In addition to the three games that Europe got, the US also had Combat Flight Sim G-Lock, Action Platformer Psychic World, and Revenge of Drancon, which in Japan and Europe was known as Wonder Boy, I'm not sure why the name change came about. So another clear winner here for me, the US launch. Now on to the first of the two Mega Drive add-ons, the Mega CD. The Mega CD launched in Japan in December 1991 with two games, the underwhelming robot fighter Heavy Nova, a Japanese exclusive, and scrolling shooter Soul Feast. The next release was the US in October of 92, where it was renamed the Sega CD. Soul Feast was again in the lineup, but there were an additional nine games too, quite a considerable number. Black Hole Assault, another weird robot fighter, prehistoric platformer Chuck Rock, which was never released in Japan, Wolf Team's interactive movie slash rail shooter Cobra Command, two Make My Video games, wherein you can make your own music videos, one for In Excess, which was never released in Japan, and one for Marky Mark, a US exclusive. The interactive movie Night Trap, Sega Classics 4-in-1, which is a collection of Mega Drive games containing Streets of Rage, Columns, Golden Axe and Revenge of Shinobi. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, which was never released in Japan. And Sewer Shark, an FMV rail shooter that again never saw a Japanese release. The European launch came in April 1993, but with only five games, half that available at the US launch. Making a reappearance was Soul Feast, Cobra Command and Sega Classics, however it was renamed Sega Classics Arcade Collection in Europe. European Mega CD buyers could also buy Afterburner 3 and the interactive movie Road Avenger which was known as Road Blaster FX in Japan. So let's compare. We'll eliminate Japan immediately, they only got two games, one of which was Soul Feast which was available across the board and Heavy Nova is pretty naff and we'll ignore the two Make My Video entries in the US lineup because they're not really games, are they? Removing the three games that were available in both the US and Europe leaves us with Black Hole Assault, Chuck Rock, Night Trap, Sherlock Holmes and Sewer Shark for the US, and Afterburner 3 and Road Avenger in Europe. Although Afterburner 3 is an attractive addition to the latter, the US launch titles were clearly better and more diverse. The second and final add-on for the Mega Drive was the ill-fated 32X. This is the simplest lineup of the lot. Every region got Doom and Star Wars Arcade at launch. Firstly, Europe on November the 14th, 1994. Unusual for a console to launch in Europe first, even if it was only by a week. Then the US on the 21st of November, and surprisingly last was Japan on the 3rd of December. So as I said, every region got Doom and Star Wars Arcade, but Japan and the US got one extra game each, Space Harrier in Japan, and Virtua Racing Deluxe in the US. So this really comes down to which you prefer, Virtua Racing or Space Harrier. I'm on the fence, so I'll leave this one up to you. November 1994 also saw the Sega Saturn's release in Japan, the five launch titles were Mahjong Goku Tenjiku, a Japanese exclusive Mahjong game, Tama, full name Tama Adventurous Ball in Giddy Labyrinth, a ball in maze game, like those little wooden toys we used to get as kids, and another Japanese exclusive. 
Wan Chai Connection, a rather strange looking murder mystery game and third Japanese exclusive, and the only two instantly recognisable titles for us Westerners and non-region exclusives, Virtua Fighter and puzzle adventure game Myst. The US launch came six months later in May of 95, Virtua Fighter was released there at launch too. Instead of the bizarre Japanese only choices of the Eastern launch, the US received platformer Clockwork Knight, arcade racer Daytona USA, rail shooter Panzer Dragoon, Pebble Beach Golf Lynx, and worldwide soccer Sega International Victory Goal Edition, which was renamed International Victory Goal in Europe and never saw release in Japan. The European launch was two months later in July of 95 with four games. Clockwork Knight, Daytona USA, International Victory Goal and Virtua Fighter, so despite being the latest launch of the three regions, Europe got the fewest games. The Japanese lineup was pretty bad, let's be honest. The pick of the bunch is Virtua Fighter and that was available in all three regions. So removing the three games that Europe received gives us a clear winner with the US lineup, including the fantastic Panzer Dragoon. Now on to Sega's final console and by far the most diverse selection of launch titles, the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast launched in Japan in November 1998 with four titles available on launch. Godzilla Generations, a Japanese exclusive stomp em up featuring Godzilla and chums. July, another Japanese exclusive which is a mystery adventure game resembling a visual novel. Pen Pen Tri Isolon, starring little creatures in an ice based triathlon and Virtua Fighter 3TB. The US launch was famously on September the 9th 1999, in other words 9999. Unlike the Japanese launch's measly four games, the US launch was absolutely huge. North American Dreamcast buyers had their choice of the following 19 games. Aero Wings, a stunt flight sim known as Aero Dancing in Japan. Combat flight sim Air Force Delta. Survival Horror Blue Stinger Flag to Flag, a racer known as Super Speed Racing in Japan but never got a PAL release Run and Gun Shooter Millennium Soldier Expendable Sega's Smash Arcade Light Gun Shooter House of the Dead 2 Boat Racer Hydro Thunder, never released in Japan Monaco Grand Prix Mortal Kombat Gold Two American football games, NFL 2K, a US exclusive, and NFL Blitz 2000, which did later also come to Europe. The awesome Power Stone, a 3D arena fighter from Capcom, one of my favourite Dreamcast games. Ready to Rumble Boxing, Sonic Adventure, Namco's 3D fighter Soul Calibur, TNN Motorsports Hardcore Heat, a racer known as Buggy Heat in Europe and Japan. Tokyo Extreme Racer, another racing game of course, and Trick Style, a stunt racer on hoverboards. Pen Pen Tri Isolon from the Japanese list appears again, although no Virtua Fighter surprisingly. Just over a month later on October the 14th was the Dreamcast's European launch. Despite being quite close, the European and US launch lineups were very different. Europe got 10 games, roughly half that as the States. Again, Pen Pen Tri Isolon featured, the only game to appear in all three regions on release day. Four games from the US list featured, Blue Stinger, Expendable, Sonic Adventure and Power Stone, and one from the Japanese launch, Virtua Fighter. The four games unique to the European launch were 3D beat em up Dynamite Cop, known as Dynamite Decca 2 in Japan, Vehicular Shooter Incoming, Sega Rally Championship 2, and Toy Commander, in which you're controlling several toy vehicles. We can again eliminate the Japanese lineup from contention. It only had four games, two of which were Japanese exclusive that aren't spectacular. Japan is having a hard time of it in this video, but that's to be expected as their console release dates usually predate the other regions by a considerable margin. So let's compare the US and Europe. As usual we'll remove the games that appeared on both lists. 
Blue Stinger, Expendable, Pen Pen, Power Stone and Sonic Adventure. That leaves the US with Aero Wings, Air Force Delta, Flag to Flag, House of the Dead 2, Hydro Thunder, Monaco GP, Mortal Kombat Gold, NFL 2K and NFL Blitz, Ready to Rumble Boxing, Soul Calibur, TNN Motorsports, Tokyo Extreme Racer and Trick Style. Impressive. Europe has Dynamite Cop, Incoming, Sega Rally 2, Toy Commander and Virtua Fighter. In other circumstances that European list would be a winner. There are a decent number on offer including some absolute belters that didn't make it to the US at release like Dynamite Cop, Sega Rally 2 and Virtua Fighter 3 TB, which are all good enough to tempt any potential Dreamcast buyer. But the huge US lineup isn't just very diverse and plentiful, it's got some absolutely stonking games. House of the Dead 2, Ready to Rumble and another one of my favourite Dreamcast games, Soul Calibur. For that alone I'd probably give the title to the US lineup, but let's be honest it was no contest. So at this point I was going to compare the best lineup from each console to decide an overall winner, but after that unbelievable US Dreamcast launch list, I don't think there's any point. That's by far the best set of launch titles that Sega ever had. I hope you guys enjoyed that, the information is freely available online of course, but it was just something that I was interested in looking at in this way, and I thoroughly enjoyed doing so. I may well do some more episodes like this for other companies in the future, but we'll see. Let me know any memories you have of Sega's console launches, did you buy any on release, or maybe even work in a game shop at the time, I'd be very happy to hear all about it. And as always, thanks for watching.